Hello and good evening, this is Ruth Pozuelo from Curval.com and uh, today we have again Colin Taylor as a guest speaker and he is going to show us how to manage header names in bulk using Power Query. So if you want to know how to do that, stay tuned because he is coming right up explaining us how to do it. So we're going to start off where we left off more or less last time, where we have our control table here with our original headers and our original names of the headers. We've got an order set here and a visibility set here using binary. And to make it a little bit of a show of how dynamic this thing actually is, I've got the orders and the visibilities actually being set with random variables, just so that every time we refresh the page or run the query again, you can see it just dynamically grabs what's available for it. And so to more or less remind you of where we were, I'm going to quickly redo some of those other parts. So we have our control headers in Power Query already, and we have our original data set that I've pulled in and sourced. For the control headers, I just want to be able to control what order they're in and which ones are being visible and which ones are shown. I have my data sets kind of grouped together so that I know as we build out the query and it gets bigger and more complex, it's easier to follow along. I have the original orders, which is a raw connection, and I have my basic header management table. So I'm just going to reference my header management table, which is straight out of the workbook. And let's do the first one where we order ascending so that all of our names are now top to bottom in the ascending order. And let's take care of the visibility too, where we just want the ones that are visible to be shown there. And then right click on the original header name and I'm just gonna drill down. And drill down produces that list. And you'll see in the calls, lists are what are handed along as arguments. And the order that they're in from top to bottom is the same as the order from left to right. And I can then hand this along as a select call to the orders and it'll keep those columns and in the order that I want to keep them. So we'll call this uh, reorder headers. So we'll reorder the headers. I'm going to be lazy and copy that because I want to use it right away. And I'm just going to reference the orders. So I'm going to start up here. We'll reference the orders. We'll start it again, move it down here into final examples because now I'm just going to do sort of the last stage of what we did last time where I'm going to use the table dot uh, select columns and I'm going to provide it as an argument, the orders, the original set, and I'm also going to provide it my reorder ordered headers, which is that list that we just produced. Hit enter, and again, you can see here, it's reduced it to the number of headers that are showing up in here, and it's going to be ordered the same. So we have shipping name all the way down through custom ID, and we have shipping name all the way through, down through customer ID. So it's managed the visibility of the columns, and it's ordered them the way that we want them. Well, now there's a next level that we want to add to this. We want to be able to rename those columns so that they show up the way that we would like them to show up. They make more sense. Some database names are not clear. A bunch of nerds sitting around in the room, they're going to write whatever names make sense to them. So you're going to be able to reorder the columns and control their visibility with the previous steps that we've done. And the next thing that we're going to do is how to mass rename the columns, which is really handy when you have a table and you're kind of trying to present it to clients or other user groups who may not be intimately knowledgeable of the database they're looking at. And you want to put more descriptive names in there. We're not going to do that for this example. I'm just going to show you a dynamic solution. But using the control table, you can really control the order, the visibility, and the names of the columns. So I'm just gonna close and load this. And because I have random numbers being generated for the order and for the visibility, you can see every time I refresh this query out here, it's actually gonna reorder and select different numbers of columns to be visible every time I refresh, because it's refreshing those random numbers. So it's very dynamic and it responds quite quickly. So let's add another column here a fourth one to this, and we're going to call them new names. And you can go in and manually parse things out, rename, type in options, and you can just go ahead and do stuff like that. And the columns will hold on to those names. I'm going to be lazy, just a little, just a little bit concatenate the order ID or the order number with the, the original ID, just so we get a sense of what's going on. And we'll carry that equation down. So now my goal is, with the mass rename, to take these original column names and give them the new name, also order them the way that we want, and give them the visibility that we want too. So I'm going to go back into the queries here. And my header management, the query is already pulling off the table. It's got those new fields. Here's what I'm going to do. We're just going to reference this. And we've already got our orders going the way that we want. And this will line up with 
this list here when I go and filter it. I'll do, I'll do pretty much the same thing. I'm actually going to filter or sort descending again on the orders and do the visibility as one. And these lists are going to largely look the same except it's got that new column. And now you're actually going to keep both columns. You're going to keep your original name and your new name and just remove the other two columns. And this is the fun part. This is where things are a little more complicated but our goal is to rename columns. So I'm gonna stop here for a second and just show you what that looks like if you do it manually. So if I come in to my now produce table and I rename column one and I rename another one, let's take a look at the call there. We've got table.rename columns. We're providing it the source and now we're providing it a list. How do we know it's a list? Curly brackets. But look, it's a little bit different this time. It's actually got two curly brackets starting it off and then between each second curly bracket, we've got a short list, the first name and the new name, comma, another curly bracket, so it's another list. So it's actually a list of lists, which is kind of hard to wrap your head around, I know. But a list, just one long list, every row is another entry separated by a comma. A list of lists is each row is its own list, which is confusing. I'm not doing a great job of describing it, but our goal is to treat the data set that we're consuming now and produce this list and it, it's not as hard as it sounds although it is a little counterintuitive maybe power query power bi and microsoft will have an out of the box option at some point in the future for doing this but there's two calls that we have to do so i'm going to start off by creating a new function and the first thing you want to do is transpose it so table.transpose and we just provide the previous table it'll transpose it and what this does if you used transpose before, most of you know, it just flips the table on its side. So we now have in the first row, the original names. And in the second row, we're having the names that we want to name them to, which is good because this next call that we're going to add to it is going to create a list of lists. So it's just the two calls back to back. So we're going to provide it as an argument, custom one. And this one is called table.2columns, which doesn't sound like table.2list of lists but it does what we want it to do. So table.2columns, what it does, and it only has the one argument of the table, is it produce a list of lists. And if I click on a single list entry here, we see that it's got the first name and the second name, freight and freight six. The third option down here is ship via and ship via 21. So it's done that. It's wrapped it all up into a list of lists where each row element is its own list. And we're pretty much done. This is actually the argument that you want to hand it now. And I'll just rename this to rename. Keep it real simple we'll rename rename so I come back into my final results here my orders table and this argument table dot rename columns source and everything between these curly brackets we're actually going to get rid of everything between those curly brackets and give it rename so it becomes a much shorter call hit enter and we're done. So we've taken care of two slightly different steps, reordering, visibility, and renaming. So our columns are now being set in all of those ways, just with these simple enough tricks and practice will help you get used to it. So I'll close and load that and we'll take a look at what our final result here is. So we see now we have our final output. We have our columns named and rename and order the way that we'd like them. And because I'm building all of this off of random IDs and random numbers, every time I refresh the table, it's still the same base underlying data, but it's shuffling the way we want it and it's naming the way we want it. Now you don't have to use random numbers. This was just to show how dynamic it is. So thank you again, Ruth for having me on for a third time. So thanks again for having me on for a third time, Ruth. Uh, I hope a lot of you enjoyed this example and find ways to use it in your power queries and your power BIs without much further ado. Thank you. Take care. So this is all for today. If you like the video, let me know by liking it or by sharing it. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions on the video, let me know on the comment box or any of the social channels listed below. And please subscribe. I publish Power BI videos every week. It's Monday, Wednesday, and um, Dax Friday's videos on Friday. Have a great weekend. Bye.